Time for another Coffee with Kilroy, or what I like to call Beverage in a Book. Beverage, you got it, coffee. Book, well, today I have a surprise. I've been on a tear of war game books, or book games, or game books, or whatever you want to call it. There's a whole bunch out there now, especially solitaire-focused war game books. And I found this one, snooping around. Have not seen anything else on it. So don't know if I'm the first to do something on this, or the first to find it, or the 50th. I don't know. But I, I haven't seen anything else on this, and I, I found it and got it on Amazon, and... Just got it in the mail today, and hadn't even paged through this yet. I'm I'm sharing with the, this with you for the first time. It is Ironclads of the American Civil War, a solitaire war game by Patrick Rial. I assume that's how you pronounce it. It's real, not certain, but I'm known to mispronounce things. Pilot the Monitor against the Virginia, or Run the Guns of Vicksburg. The Clash of the Ironclad Gunships, CSS Virginia, and the USS Monitor at the Battle of Hampton Roads on March 9, 1862, heralded a new age of naval warfare. The steam-powered engines introduced earlier in the century had already revolutionized the mobility of 19th century ships, freeing vessels of their reliance on the caprice of winds or the dictates of river flows. The innovations began, begun by the Industrial Revolution yielded powerful new warships armed with strong new guns and plated with thick armor. A new ironclad navy threatened to revolutionize the practice of naval warfare, rendering the old wooden fleet obsolete. This solitaire game system explores the use of ironclads during the American Civil War through a series of scripted scenarios that teach the system gradually. Scenarios take 15 to 30 minutes to play. Each consists of a historical introduction, a play sheet left, and a map sheet right. All you need is a pencil, a few six-sided dice, and some generic game tokens. You see an example here of Maybe the rules or charts, and then maybe this is the play sheet, and then the map sheet, so left and right. I think that might be it. This is uh, copyright 2002 by Patrick Riel, Brunswick, Maine. Again, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing the name. I need a sip of coffee here. But let's get into this one. This one is, it looks like it's following in the line of... If you've been watching any of my coverage, uh, this looks like this is kind of following in the Lambo line, so to speak, of games that have a map board on the right and a that you mark on or keep counters on, and then the the game play on the left. Don't know. Let's let's get into this. But um, you know, new name in this in this. Uh, area of the market or in this genre here so a, a new contributor so this looks interesting it looks somewhat similar to like the lambo books this is a little bit thicker uh, another thing about this is interesting is it talks about here that it's got um, scripted scenarios that teach the system gradually so it's got a kind of learn as you play type system it looks like where they're going to start out easy and uh, maybe layer on some more rules or some more gameplay type attributes as you get into the game. That you know that's a, that's different than some of the other books we've kind of looked at. So let, let's get into this. Let's let's do a little quick page through here. So um, kind of a glossy cover there, kind of nice there. Cover page. So you have a, the contents are introduction, rules, scenarios. And it looks like we have nine scenarios, training mission, the poop turtles, attack of the Virginia, duel of ironclads, ironclads versus timberclads, 
Island Number 10, the River Defense Fleet, Drury's Bluff, and the Guns of Vicksburg. Then you have some extras here, notes, and a play log. So that's interesting. You might be able to keep track of your progress, maybe, or how you do in the scenarios. Here's the acknowledgments here. Oh, it's interesting here. As this game has been inspired by a recent spate of exciting book format games, I wish to acknowledge the examples of Worthington Games, Bismarck Solitaire, Waterloo Solitaire, Gettysburg Solitaire, and Mike Lambeau Games, an ever-growing list that includes the Fields of Normandy, Battles of Normandy, Ghosts of the Jungle, and Battles of Medieval Britain, all of which I've covered. If this game offers you half the enjoyment I have found in these, it will have succeeded. I also want to thank a set of rigorous editors and playtesters, John D. Alton, Tom Consul, John Parton, and Chris Pierce. Without your generous efforts, this game would not be playable. Thank you for taking the time to improve it, and the errors that remain are wholly my own. So, interesting, nice little, little acknowledgement there and introduction, and you know, calling out the Worthington and the Lambo stuff. And then, of course, if you look at my uh, war game uh, books, or I think I call it, I think it's under war game books. Uh, take a look at that playlist and you'll see all these different games that are being added to this genre. So here's the introduction here. So you've got a little bit of a narrative here talking about the, you know, ironclads or use of ironclads. Here is the rule book. So there's a few basics talking about it. You can use coins to represent the gunboats. So you've got the map there so you can use counters or you can mark. Um, you know, I'm probably going to copy or use counters of some sort because I, I really don't like marking in these books. Um, and then you have some of the, the gameplay here. It looks like you're going to be able to mark off boxes here. And I don't know if that represents damage to them, so I have to get into this. Uh, rules. So you got map sheet, play sheet, guns. The gun anatomy, range, facing, determining hit value, shots, firing procedure, taking hits, gunboats, gunboat anatomy, fields of fire gun on guns, how gunboats take fire, when bot operated gunboats take hits, the game turn, you have a player turn, opponent turn, check for scenario in, actions or move fire, and additional rules. So there's your contents for the rules. Here's the map sheet. Now this is a little bit different and a little bit uh, uh, somewhat nice is... You've got a full graphic layout of explaining everything on the map sheet here and everything on the play sheet uh, with little notes here, just, just what's what and some markings on it. And then you have a little key over here. This is like your terrain key for the map sheet. This is nice. Um, the other games don't go to this level of detail. I mean, this is something you would find in... You know, a box game rule book is kind of a layout explaining the map and explaining the play sheet with some notes and, and uh, dialogue boxes out to the side. So that I like that. That's going to make this game uh, a little bit easier to uh, grasp or gronk on that. That's not even the right word I was using there. All right. Guns. Here's your guns anatomy. Guns operating artillery batteries, guns on gunboats, and you again you have these little dialogue boxes or notes that come out that explain what you're looking at and you know what it's used for. That's again that's very nice. I like that. That's going to make this um, really easy to get into here. Range facing and field of fire. This is nicely laid out. Um, Really taking some detailed time to kind of lay it out and explain what's going on here. Here's shots. It's very clear. Now, this is a lot more pages. Like Normally, like the Worthington books are maybe four pages. You know, their landscape uh, format. Uh, the Lambo books, you know, maybe are five or six pages it depends on how the rules are arranged but i mean this is we're already up to page nine here but there's a lot more graphic illustrations and a lot more discussion uh detailed discussion of exactly what's going on here but but not you know dense right i mean just have these little paragraphs talking about it and then having a representation out to the side so i i, I do like that 
here's fire procedure, taking hits. And then that's that's all the um, that's all the guns. Now we get into the gunboats. So you got the gunboat anatomy. And it's got some facings or arcs there. Fields of fire. Man, that looks like out of an old SPI game almost. Um, really nice here. And then you get to have this little explanation, like a little paragraph, kind of a chart. That's the, the, the gunboat, and then it's firing arcs. So you've got some examples here. So again, you know, we're up to page 13, a lot, a little bit more rules in this book than your normal game book. That's why it's a little bit thicker, but a lot more in, uh, explanation and a lot more graphic representation so far. Um, you know, can't tell by looking at this. I mean, there's a lot here, so it looks complex. Don't think it's really that complex. I think they just went to the time and effort to give it a detailed explanation. So we're going here when bot operated gunboats take hits. I was like, you're going to be rolling some dice there to determine the hits possibly. Here's the game turn. And so it looks like there's going to be action die. You're going to roll a die, and it's going to tell you uh, some of the action, like move, move, fire, move, or fire. Sorry, move, or fire, move, or fire, fire, move, and fire, move, and fire. So got some basic actions there. Here's some of the here's the move actions explaining, you know, how you're facing the boat and what have you. Additional rules. Simple action sequence. Timber clad fl flotilla ramming. That's important. Gunboat bots. That just sounds cool. Repair action, fire plus action, range batteries, silent running, mortar mortar boats. I almost said something different there. Mortar boats, shallows, two crew casualties. Again, I, these are additional rules. I don't know if these are optional or if you can add these in or if these are just additional rules that you need to understand in this game. There's quite a few. Plunging fire, transports, wrecks, sharpshooters, obstructions, elevated reaches. Then you get your scenario. So 24 pages of rules minus, um, minus three. So 21 pages of rules. So quite a bit of rules there, but a lot of examples and a lot of graphic representations. And here's your scenarios. You've got a training mission. So again, as I said on the back, it's going to progress. You're going to start out with something easy and then work your way up. Uh, and deal with more complexity. So here's a training mission. Here's a Union gunboat. And it's like you're attacking a, maybe a shore battery here. And so it's got... Uh, and this looks like it's a sequence of playthroughs. So this looks like it's got a playthrough of it. So not only do you have a scenario, but you actually have like maybe an example of play. So they really are trying to teach you the game there at the very outset. Then you got the scenario two. This is the Battle of Fort Henry, February 6, 1862. Tells you your positions. Here's the basic action dice and what you roll and what you're what you're going to get for this scenario. The field of fire for the different uh, gunboats. A little bit of historical background on this. And it looks like there's even an uh, excerpt from an article here. So that's very, very interesting. Then you got a little bit of graphics here. That's kind of cool. And more about the scenario. And then here's the actual, so this is the, what do they call this? The play sheet, where it's going to keep track of your gunboats and what have you. And then this is the map that you're dealing with here. So uh, here's the attack of the Virginia. So really laid out, they're going to give you a setup a little bit or context. They give you some historical context. Then you get the play sheet. Uh, and then you get the uh, map sheet here. So this is, looks like this. You're, you're basically this one. I think you you're, must be playing the CSS Virginia. And you're attacking these Union ships here, which looks like regular ships and not, uh, not gunboats. Duel of the Ironclads. Here's your, so this is going to be the Monitor in the Virginia. That's cool. 
Yeah, this is this is interesting looking. This is a different. It looks somewhat similar to some of the other games, especially like the Lambo type games, but yet this is different. It's got a little bit different feel and a little bit different setup of how they're doing this. Of course, it's naval, and so that's different than, obviously, Gilroy. Different than land combat that most of the other games are dealing with, except for maybe the Bismarck uh, or the air games. So, <laughs> except for the naval and air games, Robert, it's 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 different. So, uh, but yeah, but this is a little bit, you know, it, it has this, uh, the hex grid that you kind of see from the Lambo land games, but you know, of course this is naval and it just feels different. I don't know if I'm making sense or not, but it's, it's making sense in my mind, right? That's always scary. Here's Island 10. And the, the games looks like it's getting a little bit more complicated. The snares are getting a little bit more involved here. Here's this one's very involved. You got a lot more ships here, uh, a lot more, uh, uh, ironclads here so that's going to be interesting and you looks like you got a little bit different look train here looks like you got some uh, a a land forces or infantry or something along the side that that's kind of cool, interesting the guns of vicksburg this has got to be a good scenario here this is where you're gonna have to run the guns so you're gonna be running the guns and uh that's cool that looks interesting and uh Looks somewhat historic, right? So there you have it. And here's extras. I don't know what the extras or extras are. Uh, well, here's a tile sheet set. So if you want to make copies of this and then make your own counters for different things, here's some gunboat templates. I guess if you want to make your own gunboats here. I do have a uh, ironclad game that, golly, what is that game? Um, Iron and Oak. Iron and Oak, it's a GMT game that dealt with gunboats. It's, it's interesting. It's got, it rolls a lot of different types of dice. Um, so that's interesting. The, it might, I might want to play this and then kind of compare that to that game, which is a little bit more involved. Um, Iron and Oak kind of reminds me of Panzer on water, right? And during, during the Civil War times. Man, I'm making some interesting analogies tonight. So just uh, just bear with me. So you got a lot of notes here. Here's some key locations along the Mississippi. Here's notes. And there's quite a bit of notes here. So that's kind of interesting. So that's, a, hey, thanks me for purchasing the book. So, hey, you know, you're welcome. Got a few notes here. Here's some suggested reading. Uh, here is playing. And here's your uh, play log. So here's your play log. So this you can keep track of the date, the scenario, how you did, what the score was, stuff like that. And so you got several of those sheets. So well done. Well done. This is interesting. Well worth, uh, haven't played this yet, but so already I'm impressed and excited about my purchase and excited to get into this. Um, so this is interesting. Um, new, 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 a uh, new kid on the block, new addition to this, uh, war game book scene. Uh, I think this is a welcome addition. This, look, this looks this looks cool. Uh, not a lot of games out there dealing with ironclads. Excuse me, uh, especially not in a, in a, a solitaire form. So, uh, kudos to uh, Patrick. I don't want to mess up your bat last name any more than I've already have. But uh, kudos to Patrick on this one, and uh, hope this was helpful to you. Love to know your thoughts on this. Has anybody heard of this? Uh, now that you have heard of it, are you interested in this? Love to hear your thoughts and comments on this. Um, I'm excited to get into this. I might uh, try to get some uh, play uh, log on this at some point. Uh, I've got a lot of these games that I've, I've been messing around with, and I haven't really done a lot of video other than just the, the page through. I do want to get some more, but I also want to do a bigger piece. I keep on saying that, but I keep on finding new games. So I can't get that big piece where I kind of do an overview of this whole area of wargaming, this book wargaming segment. I, I'm, I'm still collecting stuff uh, and still doing some pieces. And once I get to kind of a critical mass, then I want to do a, a bigger exploration of looking at all these uh, for, for everybody out there to get get their thoughts on it so anyway that's what i have for today sorry i took a little bit longer on this one you got a little bit extra coffee break i hope and uh love to know what you think about this i'm i'm excited this is new i get i get excited about new stuff um 
And, uh, but I like everything about this area, how it's developing between uh, Worthington and Lambeau and Kirkpatrick and Patterson and Minden Games and the, the Sandhurst Book of Games, which kind of might be the one of the beginning of this whole genre. Um, really excited about this. So anyway, that's what I have. Love to hear your thoughts. Please give me some of your thoughts. Um, uh, but, uh, just as, uh, he, uh, the author has thanked me for buying this, I want to thank you for spending some time with me. I know it's precious. So any amount of time you spend with me is greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, uh, I know there's other things you could be doing, uh, other than, you know, having some coffee with me as I ramble on. So I want to thank you for that. Anyway. Have a good one. Take care. Thanks for watching.